your organic registration, excuse yeah. these bloody might be dumb questions, do you yeah. do you have a number that you put on it? Yeah, we've got a certification. Oh, logo. Got, and that's AB, is it? AB. AB, yeah, AB, yeah. AB, AB is on the back. And then, okay. and then a little bit further up, can you see just there? Wine made with organically grown grapes certified by Ecosair. Yeah. Da da da. Right. So you grow them organically and make them organically? Yeah. It's um, it's true that in that today, funnily enough, just now, huh, it'd be interesting to see how it evolves, but I can understand what David's saying about the, the oak there. It's coming through a little sure. bit more than yeah. it's coming through a little bit more than, than it has been in the past. Well I'm only comparing it to this one, which yeah. I thought had some oak, but it obviously not. It's the yeah. fruit is a bit covered at the moment, like this one's been bottled uh, four months ago. And at the moment there is the phase where it used to be all fruit. Um, but it's now a bit, a bit cover, I reckon. It's a bit more. <coughs> They've all got, always got this sinewy quality, which I quite like. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? Sinewy, you know, like right. they've sort of got good length and the tannins. Yeah. Still quite tough, but it's it's going to settle down quite nicely. All the fine grit, you know, the fine grit, which is textural as well, yeah. without being heavy and dry, and it's yeah. got some fruit weight behind it too. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's one of our main thing there is trying to get that. Uh, and Bert is never happy, enough happy with that. Like he's always finding them too hard, not enough supple. He's drinking too good wine that he's yeah, buying yeah. very expensively. So yeah, watch, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? And is a vineyard difference or winemaking? How do you vineyard do difference? Right. Yeah, only okay. vineyard difference really. Yeah. Like the winemaking is similar everywhere. Mm. Like we old vine Syrah, uh, two thousand and seven. But you would give that from harvest, you'd give that more retrievement than that or not? Or you, is there a chance that any of this material would go into that? Yeah, well, I works? think it's more a question of uh, vintage and blocks right. who are giving better and worse different, depending on the year. So, so we know that most of the time some good blocks go there and, and, and the worst goes down. So uh, at the end, yeah, it's not really, it's more selection that we mm -hmm. do after. But we know pretty much that some, some blocks are better than some You've other. You've got to go and see the vineyards, like, it's what? Hold on. It's where they are. Yeah. They're stacked away in these little corners up in the hills, and, and uh, it's very foreign, very, very foreign to us, and they're planted in rock. Yeah. And it's. Well, this is, I mean, overwhelmingly, this is more French than anything. This is. This yeah. could be anywhere in the world because it's fine and bright and right. lively. Yeah. This has got an essential pungency that is almost gamey, which I love. Which right, is, right. I think is French, you know. Right, and I, right. I, I don't know what it means. I don't know how you get it. Right. But to me, that right. the, the breeding, that is more, some, this is a real stamp. Yeah, yeah. A house yeah. stamp. So I don't yeah. know why you do that or how you do it. You know, that's, that smell, you know, that... that um, oh, it's very savoury, like, to me, like, very... Uh, it smells like wine. It doesn't smell like... Fruit. Yeah. So I think it really must make the difference at the end is like uh, you ma you last months of maturation period, which is should be nice, warm, not too warm during the day and cold during the night. Like this. Like this, yeah. So it's it's. Where are your vineyards? In Mudgee, which is Mudgy. west of Sydney. Right. It's a hot 500 meters altitude. Yeah. Minor bush vines, organic, yeah. biodynamic, right. unirrigated. Right. The whole same, same as the old part. Old part of Cahors, Bandol, that old area. Right. right. But their vines are 1.5 off the ground. Right. Same as what Boz does, only he's right. 100 years older than mine, of course. Right, right. He always wants to be ahead of me, you know. <laughs> he is, don't I'll, worry. I'll take, I'm, going to take hard, I'm going to be harder to kill, though. <laughs> <laughs> we can see that. Yeah. So, but but, but uh, if, they're, if they're not irrigated, what's your yield then? Uh, we get about uh, five, well, we're, five, we're about uh, 28. 28 hectolitres a hectare. Yeah. 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 But I crop thin too, though. Yeah. I severely crop thin, taking right. probably 20% off. Why do you do that? Because they won't ripen if they're not. Yeah, I take the floor. Well, in my case, because I'm 500 metres, I've got, I've got problems with um, um, uh, infrared light. I mean, the, the higher you are on altitude, ah, right. infrared damage hits high altitude vineyards. Yeah. Bloody oath. And particularly the fruit really? at the top it, of the bunch. The I'll infrared? Yeah. So what, what, what do you mean by infrared? Ultraviolet, this is sorry. Ultraviolet, ultraviolet. Sorry, yeah. Ultra, ultraviolet. Oh, ultraviolet, like, okay. Yeah, so it's the okay. higher you are. So yeah. the fruit that's at the top of the canopy is exposed to sunlight yeah. and has got destroyed colour. Right. The colour's half the colour of the bunches that are shaded. Right. So I pick, I, I drop all the fruit that's exposed, right. leave the fruit that's shaded. Right. And made a whole lot, lot better wine. Wow. I think the difference maybe between here is, is the, the Mediterranean air is a little heavier with water. Mm -hmm. Humidity's a little bit higher, so you don't get that 
ripping of the moisture out of the, the soil. The condensation effect, is it? Yeah. Well, you know, we've got evaporation of eight metres a year and we've got a rainfall yeah. of 540 millimetres yeah. in, in South Australia. So. Sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> what, what do you say? It, it what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you say? An evaporation of what? About eight metres. Yeah. And a rainfall of 540 yeah. millimetres. Yeah. Doesn't it? Grenache. Yeah. Like Grenache. Yeah. 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 You don't make any Grenache? No. I'd love to. Syrah is not local. Like Syrah has been implanted here 35 years ago. Oh, all right. Really? Yeah. So the so it's not a local grape Syrah. Uh, where Grenache, Carignan, Saint-Sau, uh, and Grenache yeah, definitely is the, the king of the grapes where it's been there for a very long time. Uh, and it's well adapted here, and, and we believe here we can make uh, as good uh, and probably better Grenache than a lot of in Chateau of du Pape mm. because there's some old old old, uh, old bush vine and it seems to be very well adapted to our terroir. I mean, I'm talking it about... It needs heat. It needs heat, yeah, yeah, and we've got plenty of it. Grenache is this... Well, it's weird for me. It sort of goes in funny ways, like... In some senses, it reminds me of Pinot because mm. of its, its, its sort of... It, it goes through a thin phase. Mm. I mean, you could hardly believe that this does go through a thin phase, but they do go through thin phases, sometimes in bottle, and then it comes back and it mm. sort of opens out and it re-expresses itself. Um, got that very attractive... Oh, sweet uh, perfume. Yeah, Beautiful. sweet perfume. Beautiful. I never realised that you were allowed to grow Zinfandel in Australia. I think this is the first. Grow anything. You can grow I think anything. this is. You can grow anything in Australia. Yeah. So there are no laws in Australia no. about. No. No. Right, any no. laws? Yeah. It doesn't kill you or poison you. You can do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I call it staircase pruning. So you, you, you've you've got to. Um, we, they come to about this high, and you just have spurs coming up in a lat in a round, about ah, right. six or seven spurs only, twelve buds. Maybe. And how do you form them? Just by year, by years? Yeah, when uh, train and train, them. but when you dry, yeah. you bring them up first, and you prune them very hardly, and you. Yeah. But you've got to leave more spurs down the bottom, yeah. so the trunk is thick at the bottom. Okay. Otherwise, you know, with the, you know how they get thick at the top all the yeah, time, yeah, so yeah. we have to keep them down very low. Australian. <laughs> Okay, um, so you, you so it goes like that basically. Oh, so, well, three maybe are up like that, yeah. but they go up a single. Well, in stake. a way, goblite, when you think about it, always goes like that with a uh, four or five arm. Sure. Perennial. Play, like yeah, like a goblite yeah. goes like that. Yeah. I get really, really gentle. Surprisingly, I get very gentle, very delicate, very elegant nose. That, well, that's yeah, really, that's, really, mm. really delicious. I mean, yeah. enticingly. Huh? It's well, enticingly well, delicate. The, 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 the vintage I did at Moex had the most important. I guess training for me in the world because I understood about maceration, yeah, and soft maceration. Right. So you work with um, with Jean Berrowet. Berrowet, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and um, so we we did. I was. I would, We did a bit. We did twelve wineries, and we used to just travel around each day. Right. And, right. and I worked at mainly at um, Andre Corbin, and I worked at um, uh, Fetti Cline and a, a right. little one called um, La Clotte in Saint Emilion, right. a tiny little one. In right. There. And it was all about maceration. Right. So. And my wines have always been fine because of my Hunter Valley background. Always, the wines have been never been overt. Right. It's always been soft and subtle and perfumed. I don't like over oaking wine, yeah. and so this style is more about treating the wine badly, like crop thinning. But you take the wings of the bunches off. So the, if they're 500 grams, you okay. take the 100 gram wings off, and you can right. cut the bottom of the bunch off. So right. When, when do you do that? Um, from Verizon on, two or three times before harvest. So about January? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so just on the turn or before? Or? Just after the turn. Just after the turn. Yep. Um, but the style of wine here is, if you go, Zinfandels are capable of getting to 17 Beaumet and 18 Beaumet, and, and, and that's not the great Zinfandels. They've got the, too much prune. There is an essential prune sweetness in this wine. Is that the surly style? Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it is. Um, a lot of, and a lot of Americans doing it but it's it's too much raisin and that raisin becomes a dominating feature you really need the fruit of the mm. um, the tapenade smell the, the crushed olive taste you need it yeah. as well uh, they're never strong in color but they're, they're moderate like Grenache in color and we'll use large oak generally use uh, demi moi yeah. uh, and or we use two and a half thousand or 25 hectolitre casks or 45 hectolitre casks for them and 12 to 18 months maximum right uh, and that's all, the spice and the perfume and lightness. 
and, and you're macerating after fermentation for how long? Oh, I mean, two to three weeks. Two to three weeks? Yeah. Right. Nothing. Because we have open fermenters, it's difficult. Right. Mm. If I had closed fermenters, I may go to four weeks. Right. But the open fermenters, are, but we have to cover them every day, cover them with, with big sheets of plastic. Plastic, yeah. yeah. And right. Seal them up. And, right. And the last, the last two weeks, we'll put on, we'll do a remontage for five minutes only. Just, just wash them. The just, skin. just wetting the cap. Yeah, once on a top. day, right. keeping them warm. So we'll yeah. heat them. Yeah. Heat them to thirty. You heat them to thirty. Yeah. Keep them at thirty. Mm. Keep yeah. them at thirty. Yeah. Right. Yeah, mm. but they're in concrete tanks. Right. Lined concrete tanks. That's very bored all that. Yeah. 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 High, yeah. high temperature. Yeah. yeah. High temperature stuff. Mm. Yeah. Well, we do get, we do get our crushers lose a few stems in. If they get cold, yeah. we'll get some steminess in the wine. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, mm. It's opening up very well. Like oh, it's opening up like it's very. Up, uh, yeah. On the, fr it's getting brighter and brighter. Like in the beginning, it was quite, uh, uh, to me, it was like, uh, I mean, I was very Aussie first. Like I had like only the, the first nose, but now you only see the fruit. Like yeah. it was a... Here we go, Buzz. This is your one. <coughs> Warm. Wow, look at the colour on that. Mm. Jesus, guys. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a, that's a very impressive colour. So this is Kaisler. Kaisler Worms. 2006 vintage. Worms, W O M S, eh? Weapon of mass seduction. We <laughs> You're kidding me. Weapon of mass seduction. <laughs> yeah. this is the first year. What are the great varieties? Uh, Shiraz and Cabernet. Right. So that's sort of the, the typical yeah. Aussie dry red blend. Aussie, what do you call it? Aussie dry red? Well, Australia and oh, sort of. It's not very seductive so far, but I'll, <laughs> I'll hang in there, right? <laughs> so in the 50s and 60s, Australia made these blends of Shiraz and Cabernet, or Cabernet and Shiraz, mm -hmm. and sort of as time has proven, that, that's actually a very good assemblage for, for those two varieties. Mm. Mm. Patel is the ship, this is actually serious marketing for a change, but yeah. this is. Uh, Patel was the boat that the Kaisler family immigrated to Australia on. Right. So this is Shiraz from a vineyard planted in 1961. The Kaisler family emigrated to Australia in about 1853. Right, and where did they come from? <coughs> uh, Silesia. Right. Silesia, which Where's back that? in those days was oh, part Pol of Poland. 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 Old right. Prussia. Old oh, Prussia. Prussia. Prussia, Prussia yeah. Right. They were Lutheran. Uh, they were being persecuted religiously yeah, yeah. for being Lutherans. Yeah. Really? So the Lutheran church had split in two and Right. And they fled, and they yeah, fled to, uh, well, a lot went to Canada, mm -hmm. uh, they went to America, but a big chunk of them also went to Australia. Right. Land in Australia, not a grapevine in sight. When the next fleet came, they sent the message back to, to Prussia, please send some cuttings because we're, we're wineless. Right. And we don't drink yeah. rum. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. His argument is Australia is set by historical accidents. Right. And yeah. In Barossa Valley, on gold mining for most of the wine industry came because yeah. there was only liquid for the gold mining. Old vine Shiraz. 2004 vintage. Wow, wow. man. Mm, that's very good. So I this... Think, your, your point about cleanness is great. Yeah, what happens, they, very... they, well, they develop with time. You see, it's this purity mm, as they develop. It is pure. You, you get a wonderful evolution of flavour. That's why I love this yeah. age on this wine. It's very pure, that. And there's a bit chocolatey too, but uh, it's a fruit next to it. No doubt it's right. How old are these old vines? Uh, this is another two vineyards blended together from 1961. Okay. The purity. Mm. Helps retain a certain freshness in the palate, huh? Mm. I'm quite, I was quite surprised by the freshness there is there. Big frame, though. This is a big frame, yeah. this one. Huge frame. Yeah. Well, what about me, but what about you? So this is from our, our oldest vineyard, which is planted in 1893. This was the first time I'd seen a wine really change. evolve, improve and change in, in, in the barrel. Yeah. In a really remarkable sort of way. And, and it's got, it's still got a, a stinky edge to it. But, oh, yeah. Um, I think there's enough fruit to carry. Do, it do you call that the stinky edge? There is an edge to it. In in in. Well, in, in, yeah, I wouldn't call I'm, it stinky. The sad thing is, in Australia, would be it would be knocked out of any any selection yeah, because be bit. because yeah. it, it doesn't pass the first test. But the better yeah. test is actually the weight and the structure and how it yeah. evolves. Yeah. But they fail to see. Yeah. I miss the wood for the trees, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're, they're focused yeah. on this one thing, which is just not super clean. Right. There's much right. more to wine than perfume. I mean, we watch right. in France. No one smells wine. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible the evenness about. Even though they're from, made with different styles and programs, the one commonality is texture, structure, and fineness. They're also very even. I want to see these wines in two hours to see how they evolve because that's great wine evolves with that's time. The test. You know. Mm. Absolutely. So, give a shit, and uh, many 
food production and wine production places don't. You know? It's very industrious and, and it provides food at a good price, but you know, people are more interested these days in what they're putting into their bodies and, and uh, they care a lot about it. They really care a lot about it. And well, the battle that I have is the people who are expedient, um, who want to do this for strictly commercial reasons. The reason has to be the wine has to be good, it has to be, have identity and powerful. This is the reinforcement of it. There's a wine in Australia they're marketing heavily as being called carbon neutral. It's complete garbage, you know. <laughs> we all spend a lot of time making these wines and it's, it's a big commitment from time and money and all those sorts of things, but we're around the winery almost 24-7 and if you're going to do it, you might as well do it the way you want and feel good about it. So it's the way we yeah. want to do it as well. There always, there has always been this battle about old world, new world, Australia versus France, and I, I hate that discussion because really at the end of the day, if all of the world drank just 5% more wine, uh, then there wouldn't be a, a bit, uh, too much wine around. And that's why we are happy to, to, to have our Australian friends here and mix our knowledge, our experiences with our Australian friends and uh, see the way their wines evolve differently than our wines, see the way our wines evolve, etc, etc. Yeah. And this, this exchange is necessary. And you know what, I think we've really got Australia's a little bit in front when it comes to the wine but we don't make salami like this. <laughs>